Progress in the fish room is going on. We've done maintenance up here. Now it's time to start working on the anoxic filtration project. Let's get started. Hello everyone, this is Bentley. And today, we're gonna start working on that bad boy. As you can see, I've already got an undergravel filter plate in there and using one of the standard pen plaques undergravel filter plates, I can't do one of the things I wanted to do for my anoxic filtration setup. And that's this, put a thin bag of media underneath for extra bacterial room. It's okay. If I was using a more DIY system, similar to the ones that Kevin Novak has shown in some of his tanks, I would have that extra space to fit this in. But just due to the nature of the construction, trying to fit this in even as thinly as I can, and you can see if I, you can see how little media is actually in this bag when I spread it out. Not a lot, right? But when I spread it out thin, unfortunately that is just not tall enough. So we're gonna do a proper fully empty void plenum underneath our tank. So got the undergravel filtration plates in there. Let's talk about how we're gonna set up the safety zorb and charge it. We need to get some safety zorb in here to lock this filter plate in place. So let me get some in there and then we'll talk about how we're gonna charge it. We've got a base layer of safety zorb in here. Now we need to go quite a bit thicker. In order to get a really good anoxic filtration system, you need a reasonably thick layer of substrate. Nothing too crazy, but anoxic bacteria also needs iron to feed off of. And we are going to be charging this substrate, which means we're going to be helping the safety zorb absorb certain nutrients so that it isn't stripping everything under the sun out of the water and can help us better understand anoxic filtration in this setup. How are we gonna iron? This. This is a florin base laterite powder. Now normally you could use something like a laterite substrate, uh, something like florin. Uh, there is a florin base that is a laterite ball that we used over here. But there's also things uh, like the there's a CCAM version of laterite. So instead of the black, there's the red that has laterite in it. There's a number of other ways to get laterite powder. Uh, again, Kevin Novak mentions these in several of his tutorials, but we're going to specifically use this one here from Brightwell because that's what I have. And uh, also, it's just easy peasy. So what we're going to do is get a light dusting of the ladder and base in here. We're going to put another big layer of substrate in, and then we'll talk about how we're going to charge all of our substrate before we really get to doing our anoxic experiments. We've got the rest of our substrate in. We put our laterite powder in before we did that. Here's a little B-roll to show you that is give you an idea of how much I sprinkled over the substrate. I tried to keep it for the most part over the filter plates because that's where the bulk of the anoxic bacteria should form uh, just because of how the water flow is going to occur, et cetera, et cetera. So now that we've got everything in here, we need to charge the substrate. And let me explain why. Uh, actually, before I do that, with safety zorb, if you're gonna try and replicate this experience, rinse, Rinse, rinse. Safety Zorb is normally a shop absorbent. It's made out of montmorillonite clay, which is fantastic and can be used in aquariums quite well, but the product itself is very dusty. Uh, the process I used is by using uh, these plant baskets meant for ponds that have pretty small holes, and then just putting a small amount in at a time and rinsing the heck out of it with a garden hose. And then after that was done, you know, just keep going through, going through, and basically rinsing, rinsing, rinsing until the water ran as clear as I could get it. You're not gonna get perfectly clear water, but get it as clear as possible so you're not seeing like brown runoff from the dust, and that'll tell you it's ready and then move on to the next batch. This is about one full bag of safety sorb in this 40 gallon breeder, or roughly three five gallon buckets full, roughly. Not perfectly full, but that's a rough estimation to understand how much substrate we're gonna be using in this system. And you can see it's got a fairly thick layer down here. We'll drop the camera, give you some B-roll to see it properly, but here's what we're gonna do now. Let me explain why we're charging the substrate and why this matters. Safety Zorb is basically a heavily, heavily, heavily absorbent material, montmorillonite clay, that has an extremely high CEC. So what it's gonna do is strip out almost everything in our water column. Not perfectly, but do that quite well. So for us to properly measure things like ammonia and nitrite and nitrate, what we need to do first is charge it. 
Now, this is going to reduce some of the capacity for it to absorb things, but not all. So this will get it closer to um, a number of other like DIY substrates, like using mineralized clay or even using some aqua soils. And the way we're going to do that is through another fantastic Brightwell product, this. This is their Delta GH+. Plus. It's a powder, and it has the two most important things we need in our substrate for root growth of plants, calcium and magnesium. And for those who are really astute, you will also know that those are the two primary things that you use to measure your general hardness. So this is going to act as a really good buffer. It also has potassium in it. So that's going to help us if we use some potassium plants. Potassium is not naturally found in water systems, typically speaking. So it's really good to have excess potassium in the water. Or uh, rather, in the substrate, in our case. In the water can be great too, but this is going to go in the substrate. So what we're going to do is dose this. And this, the dosing instructions on this could be a little tough, but I'm going to help you cheat. So uh, what you want is for every five gallons of water, two grams of this product. Here's the problem. That means you've got to weigh it. So a way to cheat is comparing it to salt. This is a teaspoon. A teaspoon of salt is roughly six grams. So we can kind of do some rough math. It's not perfect, but it should get us where we need to go, which is to say that for every teaspoon is six grams, roughly 15 gallons of water, but that is only to get to a GH of 1.9. And since we're gonna charge this fairly thick layer of substrate, we're probably gonna need more than that. So what we're gonna target initially is an approximate GH of six. So that means for every five gallons of water, we need one teaspoon of the GH plush. So eight, because we're using a 40 gallon tank. We're gonna let that mix up. So we're gonna add air and water, let the substrate naturally slowly suck all that up by using the undergravel filter movement. And if we feel that that's not moving fast enough, we can add a power head to add a little extra power or a circulation pump, whatever you want, just so that we're getting the minerals and water moving around and that will help move it through the substrate. The plenum is gonna help us do that and thus charge our safety sorb. And once our safety sorb is charged, we'll do that by using GH testing and testing the water and getting an idea uh, every few days about where it's sitting and how much it is pulled out of the water from the initial seeding of mineralization. And that'll tell us kind of when uh, we get ready. This will probably take a couple of weeks of charging it this particular fashion. There are faster ways to charge it and I'm gonna direct you to a video that's down in the description below. There's also a link up above right now that is a great video from uh, a user out there that I'm basically roughly following, but using some slightly different products. So we're gonna get this full of water, get it mineralized, and then we'll be done. And there we are. We have water flow moving. It's turned down right now just so that the air pump isn't too loud, but here's what we're gonna do, right? For as long as this might take, and we'll figure that out, but basically what we're gonna do is in two days, measure the GH and KH in this tank. We'll test all the parameters just cause, but we really only care about the GH and KH. We're gonna give it a week, test again, and see how much the safety orb has absorbed from the minerals and stuff that are in the water. And you can see it's a little cloudy. I put the water in a little colder than I probably should have. There's still some mineral down here. You can see it, it'll absorb through the water over time. And for now, we have the outlets for the undergravel filter plate toward the very top of the water. Once we get the substrate charged and we get to start converting toward anoxic, we'll turn down the air volume and I will chop down the air tubes to get them to the size that we actually need for an anoxic system. Now it's pretty easy. I've got them, it, you can't see it now, but I've got them at the very top of the initial like plate connector tube, which is still just barely out of the substrate. So it'll be pretty easy to just measure the tube, give it a cut, re-put it in there, and be ready to go for anoxic testing. So let's talk about how we're gonna test this thing. First, we need to charge it and get the initial bacteria colony established. Uh, we'll use aerobic to begin with, but then we will convert it to where we're using a more anoxic system. We're going to do this without any plants. Part of the appeal of anoxic is natural denitrification. So in order to test this properly, 
and give us an, a, a reasonable data set. We need to do this with a completely bare system. We will have some light, very controlled, uh, probably six hours a day total using this aquarium co-op light here, and we'll put it on a Wi-Fi timer to control the timing. From there, what we're going to do is, in a measured way, use ammonium chloride, uh, which is powder that's a Fritz product. You can easily get it online. Here's a thing of it. To get to a specific PPM of ammonia within the tank. This will simulate having fish and bio waste, etc. And then what we'll do is we'll measure it as it converts that ammonia to nitrite, that nitrite to nitrate, to produce the initial bit of food beyond the iron to feed our anoxic filtration system. All that anoxic bacteria that's going to be living in the deeper portion of the substrate, in that slow moving plenum, etc., in those slow moving, low oxygen environments. Over time, as that colony builds up, what we should see is ammonia and nitrite will level out. We may need to add like a simple sponge filter in here uh, just to kickstart that. And I think honestly, I'm going to just to play it safe. So that way we've got an aerobic system in a sponge filter. We could use like a breeder box, uh, a canister filter, a hang on back, whatever you want. That, that part doesn't matter, but I think we'll just do a simple air powered one so that we have good aerobic. And then in the plenum, where we're moving that water very, very slowly, we're creating a low oxygen environment, we should see eventually over time that those the ammonia goes down to zero based on the amount that we're adding at a slow and measured pace. The nitrites kick up at first and then get controlled. The aerobic bacteria takes care of that. And then slowly the nitrates will build up. As the nitrates build up, that will produce food. And then the anoxic bacteria should begin consuming those nitrates. And we should eventually get to a point of where we have no ammonia, no nitrite, and limited to no nitrate because of the way that this system functions without any plants, without any fish. We will do this experiment for several months. We're going to give it plenty of time, but we'll do in little, little check-ins and, and we'll talk about the data. I'm going to be measuring my testing weekly, so that way we will know week to week what we are seeing in ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. But first, we have to let this charge up, right? We gotta let the, the mineralization kind of level itself off. And then what we can do is allow that natural hardening of water to just naturally level off. We'll use pure tap water. There's almost nothing in my tap water, so it should make it very simple. The only thing that we will need to do is lightly dechlorinate like we would any other fish tank. That's it. That's the start of the anoxic system. I know it's cloudy as I'll get up right now, but what we will have soon is a test tank to give us an idea of what's going on. And after all this testing is done, we'll convert it into some nice tank for a species of fish to be named later. Let me know in the comments down below. Are you interested in seeing what happens? Have you done this yourself? I would love to hear from you. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and look forward to the progress. If you're not subscribed, become a subscriber. Hit the little notification bell. That way you can keep up with all the videos in this series follow it from here on out until we complete it and all the other different things we're doing around the fish room and other fish rooms and fish stores. As always, my friends, thank you so much for watching and stay awesome.